Hello and welcome to Auto Save. My name is Nick Andrade, obviously, and I'm here with my co-host, obviously, <laughs> Camille Salazar Hathaway, as I say the same introduction every week uh, as we're continuing our deep dive into Gotham Knights, the brand new game from WB Montreal. And on last week's episode... You spent years trying to fight this war. And for what? Corruption still flourishes in Gotham, lurking in every shadow. You don't need that mask. I know it's you. Rachel Ghoul. You allowed this blasphemy. This sacrilege. Did you think you could keep it from me? That's right, Batman is dead. Killed by blowing up the Batcave to kill Rajah Ghoul, which Cam didn't really understand why he did that. And also the doctor who performed the autopsy on Raish is dead. We have to solve that mystery. Everyone's dead. <laughs> Everyone's dead. Talia is being weird. We don't really know what's happening exactly. But how do you like the game so far after the first chapter, Cam? I mean, hey, everyone's dead. Lots of mysteries. It's definitely piquing my interest. Yes, the story is. And uh, hopefully we can learn more as we finish chapter one, The Black Gate Blues, featuring Harlequin. Uh, super excited about that. And then chapter two also, we're going to be dealing with the penguin in the next chapter as well. So uh, we're dealing with some popular Batman villains in this one. So that's the question of the day, Cam. Oh. That was the nice segue that I did. Oh. Apart from the Joker, okay? Because the Joker is off limits because everybody sees the Joker most of the time. Who is your favorite Batman villain? Mm, calendar Man. <laughs> no, stop it. <laughs> um, <laughs> I mean, Long Halloween. Oh, this one's hard. You know what? I'm going to go with Penguin because okay. like myself, Penguin doesn't take himself too seriously or he does take himself seriously. <laughs> But no one else does. So you know what? I'm going to go for the little guy out there. It's Penguin. That's a good answer. I yeah. thought you were going to go with Catwoman specifically. Oh, dang. I didn't think of that. Oh, now you want to go with Catwoman? Oh, no. No. Okay. Penguin. You're going to go with Penguin? There's cool, like, there's a lot of cool villains that we haven't seen too much yeah. of. Like, let's say the Croc or Victor Zaz or my personal favorite from Arkham Knight, which was Pig. Professor Ooh, Pig or whatever Professor his name is. Professor Pig. Scarecrow's also another good good villain. Very good. But I, I remember in Gotham Knight, he was Pig, Pig was so creepy, like dissecting bodies and the murder mystery you had to solve. And that's what I'm all about in Batman. I love me, him being a detective, solving murders, solving whatever in this kind of like, that's why I like the Batman so much, the the movie with Robert Pattinson, because that's how I envision Batman. But that's a villain to me who doesn't seem too cartoony, seems like a real life villain that would be really creepy to kind of go against. So that's a kind of off answer, but I also do like Poison Ivy yeah. as a villain as well, because she's kind of like a, she's basically like a climate change activist at this point. <laughs> Uh, she's not really a bad guy. She's just she's not you know, a bad guy. trying to save the planet. <laughs> I mean, a lot of the villains in Gotham, you could argue, are not real bad guys. They're just trying to either survive Gotham because it is yes. like a crazy place, right? Mm -hmm. Or, you know, they just start trying to stand up for what they believe in, a.k.a. Mr. Freeze. Mr. Freeze, are there another good option as a villain, but only if it's the Arnold Mr. Freeze. Fun fact... Uh, actually, because these episodes are coming out pretty close to around the time that we're releasing them. Uh, Halloween happened relatively uh, short time ago, yeah. and I dressed up as Mr. Freeze, the Arnold Schwarzenegger Ooh. version, and my girlfriend dressed up as Poison Ivy. So those oh, pictures will cool. be released soon. Oh, cool. I hope you were just saying like lines from the movie the whole Other night. people were. I felt uncomfortable doing it. Okay, that's yeah. fair. That's fair. But I, sh I should have done it. But I didn't do it as yeah. much. Like, cool you know party. Cool. <laughs> can I always count on you to that laugh at my horrible is jokes. so good. It just reminds me. That was such a good impression that it just reminded me of, like, all the ridiculous things that he said in that yeah. movie. But also, I did mention Long Halloween Holiday would be a good villain as well. Ooh, I don't know. There's... Yeah. 
that's the one thing DC DC particularly in the Batman series does villains really well. Like the mainstay, like they need to like stray away from the mainstay villain sometimes. Yeah. I want them to dive into more of these obscure, like we haven't even seen the Mad Hatter at all. Yeah, no, we haven't. Like any like movie or I guess video game, he kind of wasn't in it really either. Just Mm -hmm. briefly in one of them. I don't know. Just like, let's see some of these creepy ass characters that uh, Batman has to deal with. Give us more. Give us more. Exactly. But speaking of villains, Harlequin, of course, is at Blackgate, and we need to get some information from her, and that's what we'll find out after the break on Auto Save. Oh boy. Anyway, I got what you wanted. Hope that ain't what got you dead. <laughs> so come visit me at Blackgate. Ooh. So Harley knows that Bats is dead, but it seemed like he wanted her to help him with something, which was yeah. a book. Not really sure what exactly is in this scrapbook from what it looks like. I don't know, man. Batman keeps us guessing even beyond the grave. I really do feel like, though, this theory of like this is all planned by Batman is probably going to be what's what. And he even kept the Bat family in the dark. Here's another theory I have, right? Yeah. He's not dead, but the Gotham Knights thinks he's dead, but he's doing it. As a way to like initiate them into no, becoming, don't, then you don't, don't think that's gonna no, happen? No, okay. please don't let that be what <laughs> happens. That would be the, <laughs> the, the worst thing. Oh, by the it, it, like it ends the last cutscene after they defeat the final boss. It ends with Batman coming out and it's a party scene. No, oh do not let that happen. Uh, well, we'll see. Uh, we're still way, way, way too early into the game to find out what's going to happen. If you caught something that Jason said, though, yeah, he said Harley went kind of straight recently, did some government thing, Easter egg to Suicide Squad. Yeah. That was really cool. Which, by the way, of course, is coming out next year in Rocksteady. Is it a nod to that or is it Earth 2? Suicide Squad, huh? You know, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I just think the Easter egg's there and it's been dropped and it's just there for us fans to speculate. So it's off to Blackgate Prison to talk to Harley through a secret entrance uh, to avoid the guards, of course, because you don't want to fight them because you can't get EXP from them. Nope. But you fight some prisoners until you get to Harley's cell. Night butt. You came. Oh, but look at you. You're getting all skinny. You gotta eat. Wouldn't want you to lose them. Glutes. It's, uh, good to see you too. Uh-huh. Was it too much to ask you to visit earlier? Batman asked you to look into something. Can you tell me what it was? Wait a second. This means the Bats is dead. For real? Night butt. The night butt. I love it. Working on your glutes. To get that night butt. You got to get that (laughs) night butt. There is a part here. I really like this dialogue between the two because Harley almost breaks character when she finds out Batman is dead. Like her voice, you can see, goes in and out from her like caricature voice where she's like, oh, Batman's actually dead. And then it goes back to her like voice again. But like you could tell, though, that I think she really either cares about Batman or like it's serious. Like they have a relationship, obviously, because he was, you know, asking her for help. Um, But I thought that was cool, kind of like back and forth. Yeah. So I was going to ask you about Harley's voice. Okay. How do you like this Harley? You know, Harley kind of went straight and narrow Mm -hmm. and the voice of this Harley, because I found it wasn't for me like it's a good voice, but it wasn't for me like that. Like 
that really caricature type of voice that Harley puts on. Yeah. But now I have a theory. Go ahead, though, with your thoughts on Harley. Oh, I, I don't mind the voice at all. I like it that it's toned down a bit. Yeah. And I did like here, obviously, where it kind of like went in and out. So she was kind of using it on purpose. But what's your theory? So I think Harley has been putting on an act to make it seem like she's straight and narrow. Okay. Because she's like not like crazy talking, right? Like she's talking about exactly what Nightwing, in your case, in my case, Batgirl is talking about. Like she's not really going off that path. And when you hear her like suggest that, oh, that means Batman's dead, you hear her real voice. Like the fact that she's not putting up an act to mm-hmm. maybe get out earlier like to look like she's a new and like she's not the Harley Quinn that villain she's actually straight and narrow so that's my theory I mean great theory but I mean look at her cell look how comfortable that cell looks (laughs) I mean rent in Gotham might be pretty high so to me like why not just like live in your cell for you know you don't have to pay rent and, and it's pretty cozy in there Yeah, she also made the restraining jacket into a very nice shirt. (laughs) She did. (laughs) It's good, though. It's good to see her. Um, So she has a book that she wanted to give Batman that she's been uh, creating clues, I guess, or stuff, collecting things for him to find out. Mm -hmm. We're not really sure what it is, but she needs one more piece of information. And, of course, she wants us to get it. And she's not being very nice, not really telling us exactly what to do. She's not giving us the book even though we asked politely. So we now have to go to the cellar and go to the records room to find a card catalog and kind of match a card in order to find the key. Also, uh, there's a bunch of prisoners Mm -hmm. who you have to fight uh, because it looks like there's going to be a prison riot. Yeah. It's about to break out, I'm guessing, which probably isn't good, but after we get the card that she wants pretty easily, we make our way back to her. Now, how will I get this to you? I know. Ta-da! Of course. You attached it to a balloon. Of course you did, Harley. You can't make anything easy nope. for us. God dang it. Cool looking balloon, though. Yeah, it is a really cool balloon. And what a jerk. What a jerk Harley is. <laughs> Although the helium thing, when she uses her helium, that's pretty funny. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty yeah. funny. The, the scene is done really well. So you got to follow the balloon basically right into the courtyard where, of course, there it is, the giant prison riot. So you have to fight everyone, guards and prisoners alike. But you know what the cool thing about this whole thing is? You get to do it with the song Live in La Vida Loca, a remake yeah. <laughs> by some rock band. Or like It sounds like a pop punk version of it. And I was absolutely loving Live it. Live in La Vida Loca. That's very nice. Uh, did you? What did you think of uh, this scene and all this fighting? I like how they set it up. Like we thought, well, up until this point, I was like, oh, you know, um, Harley's pretty tame. But the fact that she puts it on this balloon and then it goes to this craziness, like they they have that like spontaneity that we would expect from Harley. Um, they just do it in the environments. Yeah. So I like that. Didn't this feel like very like James Gunny uh Marvel-esque movie type cut scene here uh, with the music and fighting. I'm re- that's why I really liked it, I think. Yeah, it was it was it was fun. It was lots of fun. Once you fight off all the enemies, there's a bunch. The balloon starts to tick and in my case Nightwing was like, "Ah, this thing's going to explode." And he's preparing himself, but false alarm just like the bang gun with the Joker. It's actually just fireworks, I guess, that explodes from the balloon and you get your book. But guess what? Harley escaped the prison. That was, I guess, her whole plan was to start a riot so that she could escape. But at least we get what we want. And guess what, Cam? We're heading back to the Belfry. What a waste of a good balloon. That balloon right? probably cost a lot of money because it was like a unicorn or something like that. It wasn't like really a regular cute. balloon. No. A really cute balloon. Yeah. Like that would have been an expensive balloon at Party City, right? At least hundreds of dollars. Definitely. Balloons are expensive. Yeah. yeah. In my case, uh, Batgirl says what now or something like that. Yeah. If there's any cases where you think it strays a little differently from what you played, please let us know. 
It's, mm-hmm. it's interesting. We'll probably have like a, their own kind of quirks or or dialogue that's a little different. But anyway, like I said before, back to the Belfry and we find out what's in the book. In every case, key witnesses were murdered. Look, they were all pinned up with knives, just like Langstrom. Bruce is on to something. Oh? I think I've got something. Oswald Cobblepot, the penguin. He's like everyone else in here. Except he served his sentence every single time he was arrested. Someone must have hung him out to dry. Might be he's willing to talk. He runs the Iceberg Lounge now. Claims he went legit. (laughs) He definitely runs more than liquor through that bar. I wouldn't know. That man would never take me. (laughs) If you wanted a fake ID, Tim, all you had to do was ask. Oswald's dangerous. And we can't forget, Harley's still out there. We have to be careful. Relax, dick. We got this. I had to leave this in here, but it was hilarious where uh, Jason goes, don't worry, dick, we got this. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, This game has some fun innuendos, at least. Yeah, the jab. I will also say um, we didn't mention like the actual book itself. Like when you get it, yeah, you flip through a few pages because like Barbara says, like what a part of this book did you ask for, Batman? Right, like because when you look in the book, right. there's information, but then there's also Harley's craziness. Yes. <laughs> so like there's a <laughs> there's a like little notepad where she like or a sticky note where she puts in the book and she's like, Dear diary, today I blew up Ace Chemical Lab. <laughs> oh yeah, that's Ace good. Ace Chemical. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And it was, so it's like, and then she has tic tac bat. Oh my god, it. I didn't even notice these things. Yeah, yeah. So it's like it's fine looking into the book too. So what we know, at least from from what we've learned from this book, at least uh, Gar- Garbra, <laughs> Barbara, Barbara kind of sorts out the clues in a manageable way that was kind of all over mm-hmm. the place. Uh, Harley didn't know what she was doing, clearly. But we find out that there's been centuries worth of crime that people have gotten off from as their key witnesses died in the exact same way they were murdered, just like Dr. Landstrom was with his yeah. hands stabbed with pinned knives to the wall. and pinned yeah. to the wall. And we find out, though, the only person that served out their sentence, at least, was the penguin. So the penguin is not getting help from the Court of Owls, so we want to know why. And what do we do? Because uh, of that, uh, we got to go interview the penguin. Batman would go interview the penguin. Interrogate, not interview. What is this? Yeah. Uh, is this an no, interview yeah. for a job? No, interrogate. I can't even say that <laughs> word properly. But yes, interrogate the penguin, and that is where it leads into 2.1, the rabbit hole, a.k.a. Oswald Cobblepot. Also, Oswald Cobblepot, top tier name in all of comic history love yeah. that name would you name a child oswald it. no you definitely Neither would not I. not in this day and age where it's like such an old timey name and the kid would probably be made fun of however sure. yes top tier villain name and i will say i'm curious as well as to why the court of owls or whatever organization is letting like they're keeping him alive too it's not just that they're not helping him yeah they are keeping him alive instead of killing him so it's they need something out of him but they also don't like him which is why he's serving his time it also said like oswald is like he turned good now or he like gave up his act which i don't buy one second yeah like he's he's turned himself around or something like that i don't buy that we'll we'll find out when we go talk to him so it's off to the iceberg lounge to confront the longtime batman enemy and once you get there you're gonna have to of course take out some guards and then bust open to his room reformed huh i believe that when i see it it is weird you did your time though unlike your friends hmm someone's done their homework Who's giving out the get-out-of-jail-free cards? If 
you really want to go down this rabbit hole, you need to know there's no coming back from it. Just tell me what I need to know. I'm gonna spell this out for you. With the bat gone, you're not worth my time. Get lost. What a low blow, man. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> it's like, we're the Bat family. Oh, but you're not bad, man. They don't. They don't not worth care. my time. Care. Uh, I wanted yeah. to say Penguin into dubstep. Is that his, like, right? The music in the background? <laughs> I, I could not. I was like, what is this? As I, I played his dick, but it, it's probably the same as you. I just couldn't believe how they just took it and they didn't even give Penguin the hard time. He was like, you're not worth my time. So they're like, okay, bye. It's like, what the hell? You guys are Gotham Knights. Like, punch, his, punch him or like, you know, break his hand or something. I guess he says they're on camera and you don't want to like attack a reformed citizen. But I feel yeah. like you could do better than that. I mean, you could intimidate. That's why Penguin felt empowered to say, oh, you're not Batman. That's exactly why we gave him that power by not doing anything in this moment. Basically, we have to earn respect. That's that's basically yeah. the key to this mission is, right? Yeah, which why? If we just beat him up there. <laughs> I, I I guess he said he didn't want you don't want to go viral attacking the yeah, reformed I citizen, guess so. right? But I guess so. you have to re- earn respect from him and I guess the people of Gotham in order to get Penguin to talk. So guess what? What's the only logical answer to do this? Go back to the Belfry, which we do. And then that's when we go back. Alfred mentions to us uh, that when Batman was younger, he wouldn't get respect like that either. So what he did was go about his business in the city, create a reputation for himself and do that for your character as well. So that's what we need to do. We need to make a dent in Penguin's operations and make it seem like we are now part of Gotham because right now we're a joke. Once we head out, we get some messages from Lucius Fox and Detective Montoya. Uh, We'll talk about that later, but first we got to do the two missions for the Penguin and Penguin story, and that is the Penguin's criminal deal and the Penguin's organ trafficking. One of them, you have to stop an organ theft, which I thought was funny, and if you get detected, the the liver or the heart or whatever it is starts to deteriorate, so you only have two minutes to get it to the ambulance. (laughs) <laughs> Did you find that easy or hard or difficult? No, it was pretty. It's like those time trials. Like, yeah, actually, did I do it a couple times? No, I got it. Did I messed up this? a few times. I had, Oh, really? It was the stealth part that I'm like, OK, I guess I can't beat up anybody. Oh, and I have to do the yeah, 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 yeah. You have to do stealth. Well, with Batgirl, she does a lot of stealth. Mm-hmm. Like her moveset includes a lot of like sneaking around. It's like often better because uh, she's better on one to one combat. So when oh. there's a lot of people, it's or enemies, it's it's always better to like sneak around, take a few out, and then fight. Okay, okay, that makes sense. The second mission also is you have to steal back some mod chips that I guess the penguin was using. So you just have to beat up a bunch of bad guys as well. Yeah. Once you do that, Montoya talks to us about the force being in rough shape after Jim Gordon died. We know in this game, I guess, that Jim Gordon has indeed passed away. We're not really sure how, unless we heard something. I don't think we have yet, right? So on the Batgirl side, you can. So like, Ooh. you know how it, the, it has like those side missions to dive deeper into like the Bat family story? Yes, yes. So for Batgirl, which I did do, I went to this like statue that's Jim Gordon. It's a memorial statue. And then you meet actually the new chief of police there who's Ah. taking a shot and the shot glass has like the best boss, right? So she's taking a shot and then you meet her there. And then she's just kind of like, oh, you know. They they have like a brief conversation where pretty much she's saying how Gordon was always talking about like the bats as the villain, but yeah. like he wasn't really like that's how she interpreted their conversations. And then she leaves, but she says something about like they changed the statue and then Batgirl's like, did they? And then when sh- the chief leaves... Batgirl looks at it and she's like, it's just as I remembered him. And then that's how that cutscene ends. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the, I think the Dick's storyline is 
more coming to grips with Batman's death and kind of becoming the leader or feeling like he is the leader and how to kind of mm-hmm. go about that and his issues with Jason as well. So that's the cutscenes that I've gotten in terms of like okay. looking so far at, at my story. But maybe we can talk about that another time. We talked to Montoya and then also we talked to Lucius Fox, who uh, is going to help us with fast travel around Gotham, which makes it easier for us to get around where we have to locate and scan drones around the city. Once you do all that, you can head back to the Iceberg Lounge, visit the Penguin once again, where he tells you Mm -hmm. to be silent because they're being watched. So you have to find a way to destroy the bugs around the room. Did you find this easy? Could you find the bugs relatively uh, quickly? Because it's really small. This was a little difficult. Right? I thought it'd be a little bit easier than it was. Mm Mm-hmm. But nah, this was no. a little bit difficult. It was they're very, they're very small. So small. Like I think I scanned the room maybe three times before finding like my first bug. And what I find annoying is that you can scan all these purple items that kind of tell you a story of something, but aren't what you need to find. Yeah. <laughs> so it always pinpoints you to that and not the actual little icons that you have to destroy. And that that's what made it more difficult for me. Once you do that relatively hard or easy depending on uh, if you're a good gamer or not get another cutscene with the penguin Gotham's elite keep getting a pass on Blackgate but not you so what you forget the secret handshake they were favored I wasn't favored by well, no one talks about them not a whispered word is said the Court of Owls is a myth. <laughs> After hearing some nice dubstep again, uh, the actual Court of Owls is real. They do exist. Penguin wants nothing to do with it and tells you to go to the Power Club for answers yourself. Mm-hmm. So there we go. The Court of Owls exist, Cam. We now have confirmation. They do. They do. And I love how just sleazy <laughs> Penguin is in all of this. He's like willing to betray them. <laughs> Yeah. But then it's like, oh, by the way, don't tell them I sent you there because he's also afraid of them. But I guess really he's just looking for the Bat family to do his bidding because they're probably a pain in his behind. Right. Because they have him probably under some like they have to have something on him, which I mean, it's Penguin. There's probably a lot on him where he has to kind of follow what they're doing. So that's where we go in 2.2. We have a little bit of a detour first. Alfred hasn't been seen for a while. Barbara's getting a little nervous, so we have to go trail him and see where he is. Burying Bruce was the hardest thing I've ever done. Yeah. Do you remember what I told you after Martha and Tommy? Come on, you gotta make this quick. You said, life matters when death matters. We take the living for granted until they're gone. I don't know what the Wayne Foundation will do without Bruce. I trust Master Grayson has been helpful as you adjust? Yeah, he sure has. Dick had his first investor call the other day. I'm surprised how well he did. Every day I find... You geezers escape from the old folks' home. Don't you know it's dangerous out here at night? Every day I find new reasons to be proud. Empty your pockets or empty the gun. You know what? Never mind. So it's Jacob Kane. We don't trust him at all, right? Uh, No way. Like, yeah. (laughs) You have Alfred here pouring out his like, oh, it was the hardest thing he ever had to do. And then Jacob Kane's like, yep. (laughs) (laughs) Also, do you remember like, I always find this funny, like in movies and, and TV shows and all this, where everyone's always just like, do you remember the quote I said three months ago or a year ago or whatever? Do you remember? Yeah, yeah. Like specific no. things that people say. I don't. Especially while they're grieving. Yeah. If if Jacob Kane was sincere, he would be more concerned about Alfred's well-being than just a random quote that doesn't really help. Exactly. And the and the most suspicious thing of all of this cutscene is the criminal who pulls out a gun on them, right? First of all, he comes up to them and they're and they're <laughs> like, whatevs. 
And then after pulls out the gun and then is like, you know what? Never mind. So clearly, I think Jacob Kane is some sort of mafioso man. Yeah. And the criminal That's realized simple. that and was like, I got to get out of here. Yeah, I was about to rob the head of the Court of Owls. I don't want to die. Exactly. Yeah. That's that's my theory right there, that Jacob Kane is definitely part of the Court of Owls. Oh, of course. A hundred percent. Into the Powers Club, and we find out there's a secret entrance underneath the floor of the club with a trail of blood. So we have to find the secret switches to get down there. I always like this kind of stuff. This kind of like detective work always makes me happy. And then finding like, you know, it's like a, a haunted mansion where if you like, t- you know, take out a book, then it kind of flips. You know what I mean? I, I like that kind of mm-hmm. stuff where there's like secret entrances. How many secret entrances do you have in your home, Nick? I feel like because you love it so much, you probably have that bookcase behind you with all the figures. Secret entrance. Listen, if I if I was a rich man and I, I would one build a mansion that would be like a castle. It would look like a castle. Okay. <laughs> And there would 100% be a million secret entrances. There'd be secret rooms that you could get to. It'd be amazing. And it'd just be for Mm -hmm. fun. Like you could watch TV in some room that you've never found before, like the room of requirement or something like that. It'd just be like super sleuthy. And But there'd be no, I don't want to say, like there's no like bad things going on. There's no murders happening, okay? Like a lot of secret rooms have, but mine would just have popcorn and movies, okay? That's it. Well, it's kind of like how uh, people do like those secret like gaming caves like in oh, their houses so cool. where the entrance looks like it's just a bookshelf or like a cupboard, but then it's actually into their game room. Yeah. So that's cool. I love how I had to like justify myself saying there's no murders going on. In these I'm like, rooms. I don't know why I didn't think there were murders going on in the secret rooms, Nick, Uh-oh. but oh God. someone check out Nick's oh, house. No. Oh, no. Jeez. Oh, no. Oh, Once we go down to the secret room, there's another puzzle that we have to solve, which is we have to switch these gears in order to fill out a shadow that creates an owl. This is pretty easy for me. Uh, did it take you a while yeah. or pretty straightforward, right? It was pretty straightforward. It reminded me of Resident Evil Biohazard. Ooh, you do yeah. like a puzzle like that. That one was really complicated. This one was easy. Easy puzzles for Nicholas is always a good time. Once we get past the secret entrance, we indeed see some people with Court of Owls masks that we have to fight. So that confirms it all. They are indeed real. And after that, we overhear some members talking. Maneuvering around that plane, boy, was such a waste. So many things we could have done. His death has cleared the way for our new acquisition. Good. However, do try to be careful where you let them dig, my dear. <laughs> As for that other issue. We've already bribed the senators. I can assure you a bill will pass early next month. Wonderful. <laughs> I abhor dealing with filth. So first of all, the most important thing of that entire scene that you can't see, obviously, for audio reasons, but as you're playing, the old lady's dog is so ugly slash, I don't know what it is, like a Shih Tzu or I don't even know if it's real. It kind of looks like a (laughs) fake dog. It was so incredibly distracting. Why? (laughs) I mean, yeah, the dog's distracting, but (laughs) I can't take this this old lady seriously. With this bug-eyed dog looking at me, looking like he's about on his last breath. (laughs) Like, he's definitely, like, 14 or, like, 15 years old. And he's got, like, I don't know, like, a a torn ACL and he can't move. (laughs) I have nothing to add. (laughs) Uh, Anyway, who is this lady then? Okay. Who's this lady? She's definitely rich and powerful. They mentioned taking care of the Wayne boy, Bruce, obviously. (laughs) And there's a bill they want to pass. So this... Definitely feels like a uh, Illuminati type situation. Oh, of course. Of course. And I don't know who, like, who would that lady be when you think of, like, Batman? No idea. That's what I'm saying. The only other, like, older woman, but not this old woman, would be Amanda Waller. Okay. And I don't think Amanda Waller would have a dog. Maybe she would. But I feel like this is just someone wealthy in Gotham. like an old woman and her dog who's not supposed to have a name or be of huge like importance 
based on her identity. More guards to deal with here to Cam. Uh, we have to follow the rest of the train of blood to this weird contraption where a man is tied to it. So you obviously know that something bad is about to go down. The court cannot forgive your failure. You will atone with blood. Don't do this. I won't do anything. And you, Vernon, do not belong here. <laughs> The last time an intruder set foot here was more than a century ago. The punishment for this insult remains the same. Uh, that's Jacob <laughs> Kane, right? Like that, that yeah, guy in the that has like to that, be. It that, has to be Jacob Kane, right? I mean, you could wear a mask, but the voice can't be masked. Like that is definitely Jacob Kane. The way he walked, 100%. he walked in too. Like I was like, oh, alert, yeah. alert, Jacob Cade. That's Jacob Cade. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, it's Jeez. they they make us fall to our deaths. Yeah. Basically, obviously, my Nightwing and whoever you're playing is able to safely get down the pit, but the other person <laughs> just dies, unfortunately. Yeah, you because so with <laughs> it's not funny. Yeah, it's you're laughing so here. hard. What is? But so funny. For some reason, I just found it a little bit humorous a little bit just a okay. little bit when he falls batgirl tries to save him okay and then i don't know does i don't remember fully but from what i remember he kind of just let him fall to his death yeah well batgirl like ch- extends her hand but like it doesn't uh, maybe work maybe it's the right? same thing maybe it's the same thing but then like he just dies like falls to his death and like i think i can't remember exactly what she says but i just remember like chuckling a little bit she's just like oh that's so sad like it was just like that that poor man or something like that and i'm just like he legit died and you're just like poor man oh oh well let's say you haven't died from falling to your death guess what there's a second thing that's in your way and probably the most annoying thing I have faced in this entire game so far, which is this giant contraption. I don't even know how to explain it. It has knives. It has spinning things with pointy ends on it. It has fire. It has every, yeah. every, every part of this wall is, is basically pointy and will kill you. And you have to be perfect to get through this. I don't even know how to explain it. It's just weird 18th it, century looking. So many so times. So many times. I was it so was- frustrated. There was a point where I had heard the dying like music so many times that I took off my headphones oh, because really? I was starting to like rage. Because I was like, how do you do this? Every time I go to the wall, I get killed. <laughs> I, I move one way, a knife slashes me. Or I go one way, the fire gets me. Like there was... It took me, I don't even know, like 20 times to get through this. It was so frustrating. And every time, the mechanics were weird. Where I was like, I I think I have a free spot. I was at one point in the clear. And then one of the spinning nine things came back and killed me. I was so pissed. (laughs) Yeah, no, this was a very frustrating moment. But I like that it was so challenging because it's like this made me fear the Court of Owls even more. I'm like, I don't know what contraptions or traps they're going to have me in next. I don't want to go through this. And we haven't even like faced any bosses yet. The biggest boss fight so far has been this stupid pit. And I was so frustrated by it. I'm like, if this is going to be what it's like for this entire game, I'm going to have a problem. We are going to have a problem. Once you painstakingly get through it, you end up in this larger pit where it's basically just a bunch of skulls, bones. Uh, It looks like people have been murdered here for centuries which is uh, not a good look. And in my situation, Nightwing was pretty freaked out by it. But he does notice on the ground that there is a cool-looking owl key on the ground that he wants to take back to the Belfry to examine some more. We don't know too much about the Court of Owls, but that's it for Chapter 2 as we head back to the Belfry. And after the break, we have a group huddle in our secret lair for what's next. And we also talk other side missions on Odyssey.
Supposedly some wingnut wrote a tell-all book about them. But it's a legend in and of itself, so... Shame, really. Such a work would have made a wonderful addition to the library. The earliest version of the court rhyme is from the 1700s. And says they're after the fountain of youth. <laughs> Seem pretty kill-happy for people who want eternal life. Those aren't mutually exclusive. There were a lot of bodies in that pit. And one of them was holding this. Might open something useful. Our scans revealed an isotope embedded in the metal. It definitely has a match. It's a key. So? Let's find the door. Let's find the door indeed. I gotta mention one thing that I hear from this cutscene, which is they mentioned the Fountain of Youth. And that's what the court was after before, at least in the myths and the fairy tales or whatever. Makes sense now. Would that be the Lazarus Pit? That's exactly what I'm thinking. And now we saw Reja Agul in the beginning in Talia. Yeah. Now we got the Court of Owls. Like, at least I would think that something has to come together with this, right? Yeah, I feel like... <sighs> Like, is Reza Ghoul part of the Court of Owl? Like, but then they would have been after, they would have been after the Fountain of Youth, Lazarus Pit. So yes. there's probably some tension between Court of Owls and the League of Shadows, right? Ooh. And maybe my theory of Batman not siding with the League but using the League's need to get rid of the Court of Owls to his advantage because he doesn't know much about the Court of Owls. And maybe he staged that whole 30-minute fight for him <laughs> <laughs> to throw us off. But he's maybe like, maybe he's working with the League on this. And that's why Talia is even acting weird. And Alfred's probably in it too because, I mean, when does he take a vacation? I think that is such a great theory, and I hope that it's like League of Shadows versus the Court of Owls. That would be mm -hmm. really cool. I would love to see. But yeah, I'm, I'm pinning that as one of our theories. I think we're, honestly, I think this is the closest theories to the actual answer. Like, How we would play you know? We have theories. Even have been, I don't. I have no idea, but this is what I'm saying is it what I feel like, like is that oh, okay. this is, it feels right. You okay. know what I mean? It just it feels, feels right. right. All right. It does. It does. We'll see. it. So let's talk about everything else we saw in this game so far that maybe we haven't unlocked or we have. There are side missions. You talked about it. You can do Barbara side missions. I did one as well where Dick talked to Jason. I also feel weird every time I say Dick as in terms of a name, but I got to get used to it. Maybe I'll call him Richard. I don't oh, know. By, by the way, the low yes. jab at Tim Drake. You oh, weren't right? even the, yeah, you weren't even like the first Robin. Yeah, or that the was second. like, come on. Yeah, come on. <laughs> what the hell? I mean, you're both oh, still alive. Man. Technically, Jason died once before, but it's okay. We don't have to talk about that. Yeah. You did Harley's Quest already or no? I have not. No, I have not. I have not. Okay. Honestly, the quest like I've been most interested in was Barbara's quest just because there's that storyline of her and like her father, right? Right. So yeah, uh, Harlequin, you can do it. Uh, the range is from seven, level seven to 10. This point of the game, I'm level nine right now. And I've upgraded my gear a bunch. I've changed the way I look. Nightwing, I have a full mask on now, which looks pretty badass. But Cam wouldn't know because she doesn't change her characters at all. She's missing out on like sweet Batgirl outfits. But it's okay. She's looking at me like death stare, like whatever, Nick. I can do what I want in my gameplay. <laughs> Don't hate on how I play, Nick. Jeez. Have you unlocked your flying transportation yet? I have. It's the Nighthood no. Story Quest. What? Oh, you, I, do no. you not know about this? <laughs> no. So each character have their own. I know like they have their own thing. I just didn't know we unlock it. You now. can unlock it. Yes, there's. it's called the Knighthood Quest. You have to do one training quest, and then you also have to do, while you're out fighting crime, you have to do a bunch of uh, takedowns or something specifically. Okay. And then once you unlock that, you get your secret maneuver or whatever it is. For Batgirl, it is, uh, she's mostly like Batman where you can fly around yeah. with your cape. Red Hood has like this weird stepping green thing. I don't know exactly what it is. I have no idea what that is either. Uh, and then with Nightwing, he has this 
I don't know, that he holds on to the glider. glider. Yeah. Which is really strange. And I, I didn't really understand the mechanics at first. And I kept sinking down to the ground. And then I realized I had to put my joystick the other way for it to fly. But it's pretty slow. And it's not that great. Yeah. I would ask you about bad curls, but you haven't unlocked it yet. Yeah. Uh, I, you could ask me next episode. Okay. Because it'll it'll save some time for a lot of things. You don't have to use your motorcycle. Okay. You can you can cross some but rivers. But it's and so stuff like much that. fun on the motorcycle. Yeah, it I is. guess crossing the rivers that would be helpful. The motorcycle is so. We haven't talked about that much, but the motorcycle is really fun. It is so much fun, and it's not like where I feel sometimes with motorcycles. And I might have mentioned this uh, last episode, but I just feel like it's so the controls are like not mapped properly and it goes so fast that the mechanics it's just weird this i actually feel really comfortable on yeah i agree it's the same thing that's one one of the things i feel really comfortable with Mm -hmm. there's also the fast travel from lucius you can unlock i think it really sucks the drone situation where you have to like wait for a drone to dock and then scan it every time you have to do this for every oh, yeah. time you want to you know, unlock fast travel, I think it's such a waste of time. They could have made that way more fun, um, but yeah. that's just me. And then unlocking weapons. You can also unlock ones with like cryogenics, yep. uh, electricity, stuff like that, which makes fighting so much easier when you yep. have these like abilities on them, right? Yeah, it does. Uh, next week, we're going to maybe find out more about Court of Owls. I'm not really sure, but we, of course, want to thank <laughs> Our wonderful producer, producer Greg, for putting all these episodes together and getting us all our clips. We really appreciate it. Cam, I really appreciate you as well. But that's it for us. Uh, Next time on Auto Save, let's see if uh, the Bat family can get things going. Stay cool, bird boy. Cool party.